Now it is time to start the first plenary session. How should Japan navigate its politics and economy towards 2020? The panelists for this session are Mr. Yoshimasa Hayashi, a member of the House of Councilors, and Mr. Heizo Takenaka, director of the Global Security Research Institute and a professor at Keio University. This session is moderated by Mr. Nick Gowing, international broadcaster and journalist. Will the uh, panelists please take the stage? Please give a round of applause for our panelists. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm always amazed that you're all here on a public holiday. Um, and you're this devoted. Last year, if you remember, we were fighting a typhoon. Today, it's beautiful autumnal weather. So thank you very much indeed for inviting us all here. Last year, we were rather blown around. Excuse me while I just put this uh, and organize myself a little here. But the reason uh, for that is because of this. Um, many of you who were here last year, and this is a very dynamic community, will remember that it worked terribly, incredibly well. The idea that we're going to be talking up here is going to be a conversation, no speeches. Um, and you can contribute. You can help set the tone, um, either by using your hand or by using this. And this is a fantastic way of me understanding the kind of things that are already being stimulated in your mind uh, when you hear our panelists speaking. And I'd like you to come into the conversation right from the beginning. So if you've already got ideas uh, about this issue and these issues, please uh, start filing them to me now, because uh, I need to hear from you uh, as soon as possible. Um, we're going to hear some opening remarks in a moment, but uh, let me just tell you that um, having been here a year ago, um, I've seen in person Mr. Abe three times in Davos and also at the Guildhall in London. And I must say, uh, as non-Japanese, the impression being left by your Prime Minister about the determination here in Japan is very important. I saw him with a large number of businessmen sitting in the Guildhall at a formal banquet. Um, and it was palpable among those who have no connection with Japan the kind of impression that he was making, and that's rather important, quite apart from both the on-the-record and off-the-record um, uh, appearances that he made in Davos and has made elsewhere. Um, I would note that um, this is about making proposals, not criticism. So what we want today is analysis and to be clear on the fundamentals. And obviously, this is changing pretty fast in so many areas. We're going to be looking about how uh, Japan should navigate now its politics and economy. And the navigation is continuing uh, even as we speak. So this is a very dynamic issue whether it be about Arbonomics or whether it be about TPP as well. And as you'll see in your little booklet, um, there is also the issue about relations with neighboring countries. And some of us have just come from China, from Tianjin, from the World Economic Forum uh, meeting of the new champions there. So several uh, have a significant understanding about the feeling, certainly uh, in China, about, uh, about Japan as well. Um, this is about bold reforms to execute our growth strategies, we've just heard the Prime Minister say. We have uh, a conviction this is our only way. Uh, we need reforms that are not tied to vested interests, and I'm ready, as he said, to be the electric drill, which is an interesting um, comparison and a metaphor. Now, let me just highlight a couple of things which are important before we hear from our guests. Uh, for those of you who maybe were in holiday mood yesterday, um, on the issue of Arbonomics and uh, the Third Arrow. Um, yesterday, uh, the Prime Minister said on NHK that uh, he remained, quote, neutral, which is an interesting word, on whether to proceed with a hike in the sales tax to 10%. Quote, the economy is, living, is a living thing, and we are thinking about this in a neutral way. Building on many of the concerns, some of which I'm sure are shared in this room, about what happened in April and whether the, the, the rise then was correct, and also the impact, the 7.1% annualized uh, fall in GDP, and the impact that's going to have on the economy, and therefore whether the next hike should go ahead. But the key word there from the Prime Minister overnight is neutral. Uh, let's now move ahead with uh, the views from our panelists, and please 
think of uh, contributing. I will come to you as well using microphones uh, later on, uh, depending on the kind of things you want to talk about. But let's, uh, let's move ahead, um, first of all, with our guests. And first of all, I'd like to go to Heizo Takanaka, your director of the Global Security Research Institute and professor at Keio at the moment. But of course, you do have a, a strong relationship uh, with the government and with the prime minister. What's your view of what is happening now in, with the fundamentals of the economy, with the tax rise, with the third arrow, and what neutral means, and which way it might be going or should go? Ah, we need microphones for our guests, please. <laughs> I can keep talking if you want for the next hour and 15 minutes. Of course, I can shout in my voice, but anyway, let me uh, make uh, use of the microphone. Well, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, and also, uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Hori and the Globis uh, people. Well, G1, the hidden meaning of G1 is Globis is number one, maybe. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, uh, it raised a very important question about what's happening in the Japanese economy. But first of all, the important point is tax hike. It's not included in economics. Abenomics is a different, much more fundamental policy. But tax hike was decided by the former cabinet, the former government. And this is actually the negative asset inherited from the former government. And in my observation, Mr. Abe himself doesn't like tax hike. Actually, however, this was decided already by the law. And uh, uh, this is the reason why the tax should have been hiked at the uh, spring this year. But the results were very miserable. The growth rate of the second quarter was minus 7%. And amazingly, the consumption tax, uh, uh, sorry, personal consumption decreased by 19%, and housing investment declined by 35%. This is indicating how serious the negative impact of tax hike was. Uh, but anyway, economically, this is not good policy, but politically, he had to take that kind of policy because this was decided already in the Diet or two years ago, and this was announced domestically and internationally. So, uh, although Prime Minister is using the term neutral, he is still neutral. Still, still, I'm, I, I believe the tax hike next year we will also take. But anyway, as far as the third arrow of the uh, Abenomics, so-called growth strategy concern. It has improved a lot in the past year, past year or so. Well, last year, the first uh, growth strategy was announced. At that time, uh, Professor Hamada, a mentor, a famous professor of Yale University and a mentor to Prime Minister Abe, made a very serious criticism on that. Uh, well, if the score of first arrow, score of monetary policy is A, but the score of second arrow, fiscal policy is B, but the score of third uh, arrow growth strategy is E. So A, B, E, Abe. This is uh, the uh, criticism done by Professor Hamada. But this year, well, uh, the second round of growth strategy is really, well, to some extent appreciated. The reason will be, maybe, as I introduced in the video message, uh, this January, January this year, Prime Minister Abe made a keynote address in the Davos meeting. And he made uh, four promises, important promises. One is, well, uh, to uh, make a breakthrough to the so-called bedrock regulation, the making use of the, the framework of special economic zone. This is the first promise, to break through this, the uh, bedrock regulation. The second promise is uh, to reduce corporate tax. And third one is uh, to make use of foreign workers to support the activity of uh, female labor. The, third one, uh, the first one is the reform of GPIF, Government Pension Investment Fund. This, the reform of these four items already started. So in that sense, we, the growth strategy is steadily, slowly but steadily advancing. Uh, this is the current situation of the uh, Japanese economy. So I'm not so pessimistic about the current situation of the Japanese economy, but the distortion if any, will be the consumption tax hike. This is already decided by the former government. Uh, this is a negative asset inherited from the uh, former government. Well, uh, the new, but new stage of Abenomics is going to start. 
Well, last week, uh, the cabinet was reshuffled, and uh, Mr. Minister Hayashi was released, in a sense, uh, from the constraints now. But anyway, we are mo moving on, uh, going ahead, uh, moving uh, toward the right direction. This is my basic observation. Thank you. Um, as you were released from the, the tight control of the cabinet, you can therefore be very frank about what the cabinet is thinking. And let me remind you um, what the Prime Minister said last night. We'd like to get e economic indicators from the quarter and hear the views of economists. So this is the first chance on this Monday morning after the Prime Minister spoke on Sunday for economists and people like you to be contributing to this debate. How much nervousness was there, has there been in the cabinet about uh, the consumption tax and the 7.1% annualized drop? Yeah. Thank you, for, first of all, uh, inviting me again this year, uh, even though after I stepped down as a minister. And he said, released, and I'm still looking back, uh, backward at the checking, there's no SP following me uh, <laughs> after 10 days after the releasing from the cabinet. But uh, uh, Professor Takenaka used to work for as a minister too, so uh, he's a sem uh, in a sense, and he warned me, this is the most dangerous time because you, you feel freedom of speech so much so that you might, might be misquoted. So I, I take that lesson very much. But uh, for uh, <coughs> consumption tax, I think uh, 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 the two or three things I would like to comment is the, uh, uh, I really echoed with the Prime Minister saying neutral because... Uh, what does would, neutral mean? Neutral means he didn't decide it yet. You know. Um, the condition is uh, the, the lessons when we raise the consumption tax from three to five under Hashimoto. The, when we discuss about raising, it, it has to go through all the party process so that uh, uh, it might take three, five, six months to decide about how to do that. And then it has to be in the legislation. So drafting the bill take like two, three months at least, and then it is introduced to the floor, and then it's enacted by majority, and then after enacted into the legislation, it might take six months to almost 10 months or 12 months to be really started as a new rate. So in total, when we start discussing about raising attacks until it's really in effect, at least it's 18 to 24 months. So when we start debating about raising a tax, it is still good economy at that time. But after 12 months, 18 months, 1997, 1998, you will remember that we have a Asian currency shock and Hokkaido tax shock ginkgos and everything happened after that. So when it really act, actually happened, Japanese economy was downtown. So that's why not, not, not to repeat this mistake we have made when we raise from three to five. We decide that next time we have a plan first, and then from five to eight, eight to 10, every time finally the government in that timing has to decide close to the timing, like six months to eight months, after we finish all those legislative work, which he mentioned, that the last government did, but actually the legislation passed by three parties, DPJ at that time in ruling party, but together with LDP and Kome party. So that's a three party passed that legislation which decides to raise from five to eight this April, and then eight to 10 next October. So, which is in legislation. So finally, the <coughs> law was designed so that uh, the latest government decision will follow to confirm that. So this is what uh, Abhisan is saying, the new trial. Until we see the figure of July, September GDP figures, which is coming this November. So everybody knows that the January to March, it is a hike because of the prior to April 1st hike from five to eight, everybody's dashing, buying anything they can buy. And then uh, from April to June, it's the downtown after that. So, averagely, with one first quarter and second quarter, 
So what will happen July to September? Is it coming back to the normal stage or is it still hanging on because uh, some weather problems, so many storms, so many rainfalls, so that might affect. So uh, we, we, we will be very, very, uh, has to be very, uh, in a sense, uh, sensitive about the economy's uh, 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 tendency which is really coming back to the normal trend which we'll be scaling after the first and second out of uh, abenomics uh, last year or still it's going down after we hike the uh, consumption tax. So that's one thing we have to be very careful. But another thing, like he said, that we passed the legislation so if we decided not to raise a schedule in legislation, which means we have to amend that legislation. So amendment comes to the floor next January, and which has been a heated debate, and that is some political cost. If we decided to go uh, as scheduled, that doesn't require any new registrations. So that's put the one another condition for that. So that's why I'm totally uh, agree with Prime Minister saying neutral at this moment now, before we see the figure of a GDP uh, July, September. So, um, Sad Allos, the my uh, friend, uh, who is a famous uh, economist, says that uh, Sad Allo is not one big Allo, but it's a thousand sting. And in Japan, sting used for acupuncture. So that uh, sting has to be put in a very light spot for acupuncture. If you miss the spot, it bleeds and it hurts very well. So that's why the thousand stings is not making a big uh, headline of the Wall Street Journal, which uh, helps to raise the uh, uh, Japanese stock market maybe, but it will, like acupuncture, works uh, very steadily as time goes on. So it's the growth plan, so it's not just like monetary policy, you know, take effect in one day, or fiscal policy, which solely could be decided by the government, which uh, take into effect like six to s uh, 12 months, as I said. But this is the co-work between the government and private sector. Even if we have growth plan, tax incentives, and all those subsidies, of all those policies, if the people in the boardroom doesn't do anything, that makes nothing. So it's a co-work between Southern Needles here and the business side. Can I ask you both, is what is happening now with the 7.1% or it may have been 6.8% or depending on which way the figures go, is this in line with the modeling? Here we are having this discussion a year later. Was this what was expected as the impact of the consumption tax or not? In other words, is it a shock, is it a surprise, or is it a political challenge which you knew would have to be confronted? Takanaka-san. Well, my observation is relatively simple. Well, uh, this consumption tax hike is a bad policy, economically speaking. This will provide very negative damage on the market economy under the situation where the so-called deflation mind is con con continuing. However, politically speaking, the government cannot avoid that because it was already decided and announced. In order to stop that, new laws should be created, new laws should be approved in the diet. In order to do that, the prime minister should make use of a huge political capital. This is impossible, so, so, so under such circumstances, Although Prime Minister still use the term neutral, well, they have to, they, they cannot avoid tax hike. But let me be clear, is, is this the kind of drop in GDP which was predicted and expected by modeling? Okay, not only the government, but also the all private economists predicted the GDP growth rate in the second quarter will decline by about 4%. But actual development, uh, the decline was 7%. So the, 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 the impact was much more serious than expected. So now, what kind of policy will be taken? The, most wor the worst scenario and most possible scenario will be to cancel out the tax hike. The government will provide supplementary budget, um, increasing government expenditures. 
in this case, the government revenue is increased, the government expenditures increased, creating the big government. This is the maybe worst scenario, but most possible scenario. The alternative scenario will be, well, the tax hike cannot be avoided. However, to cancel out the negative impact, let's increase, let's promote, let's enhance the speed of the reform to cancel out that. But even in this case, in the short run, some negative impact it will remain. So again, let's make use of monetary policy to cancel out. The second round of monetary expansion is unavoidable. This is my view. So 4% has become 7.1%. Let's get more contributions from the floor on this. Um, let me go to Hayashi-san. Uh, let me quote to you what your former colleague, the economy minister, Amari-san, said uh, 10 days ago. The government will not press ahead with the second stage of the tax increase without taking any measures to support the economy, saying the decision due by the end of the year was one that policymakers are looking at more cautiously than before. What can we expect from the BOJ meeting on the 31st of October to support this, this policy? Uh, so that uh, the hike, uh, after the hike, like Professor said, the, the market expected 4%, but the downward is 7%. But on that's, the a other, big, that's a big miss. Uh, actually, the mountain was higher than expected also, which means January to March, the, uh, you know, they expected some hike of uh, consumption uh, before the hike of the consumption tax. But mountain was higher than expected, and then the valley was deeper than expected. So well, I think what is important is uh, the balance between the first and second uh, quarter. And if we average the two numbers, and then we compare the third figure, the July, September, with this trend. So important is not a high deep dips, but the trend, so that if we can keep the trend of a sustainable growth, considering out all those high and depths, then I think it's okay. Um, I'm more neutral or more for the consumption tax hike because he said it's a bad economic policy, but for macroeconomic policy, that is bad. But for fiscal and for sustainable fiscal situation, which has to supply for the social welfare, we, that is not a question of whether we should increase or not, but when we should increase, which is the best timing for economy. But so, without taking any measures, what more measures are needed? I mean, could there be a five trillion yen um, injection from uh, BOJ? Yeah. So that, uh, uh, that I think at the end of the day, it's the mixture of the fiscal, which is supplementary budget, and monetary policy is, and like he said, the structural policy. It's not the one out of three, but mixture of three. And I think there should be very, we, we should be very careful when we do, or whether we, uh, when we do the fiscal stimulus, what type of fiscal stimulus? Because public building is already tied in the supply of the labor and supply of the machine because of the uh, eastern part of Japan, uh, <coughs> revitalization, rebuilding. So the simply putting more money for public building is not actually working very well. Takanaka-san, uh, the idea of additional measures, do you believe there will have to be an injection from the BOJ later this year? Uh, okay, uh, before t talking about the uh, BOJ, I'd like to give some, some comments on the, the fiscal situation, et cetera, et cetera. Well, many people say the mountain was high, so valley was very low. The last minute demand before tax hike was very uh, huge, so this is the reason why the drop was very sharp. But, well, but you expected that, didn't you? That's the way the, point the public is, respond. Point is, the mountain was not very high this time compared with the last experience of the tax hike. In uh, 1997, we had a consumption tax hike. Well, compared with that, the last minute demand was uh, the, almost similar. But drop is very serious this time. The why? Well, at that time, in the past uh, second ex uh, two experiences of a tax hike, uh, together with tax hike, some kind of tax reduction was also taken. But this time, only tax hike was taken. This is the reason why negative impact 
was very serious. And many economists, including the government, uh, were ignored this kind of fact. Uh, this is one important fact. And as for the expenditure side, well, tax hike will not contribute to the fiscal rehabilitation. This is the most important point. Well, uh, now uh, we are going to hike the consumption tax by 5%, but 4% of this will, uh, you know, to, to cover the past expenditures. The only 1% of this 5% hike is used to improve the welfare, social welfare situation. So this will not contribute to the improvement of social welfare. And the, uh, also, in order to realize real fiscal rehabilitation, two more things are needed. One is to realize the economic growth, high economic, nominal economic growth. The second one is to, curb, to cap, place a cap on expenditures. This kind of effort is now needed. Without this effort, the tax hike is almost meaningless, providing just negative impact. So what okay. other measures, according to Amari san the e economy minister, need to be thought about in order to justify raising tax again and taking that risk? Okay, two, two kinds of one. One is to strengthen the growth strategy. This is supply side policy, so it will take some time, but this will ex enhance the expected rate of growth to stimulate investment, etc., etc. This is one thing. Another one is, well, uh, we need help from the Bank of Japan, another round of fiscal, uh, sorry, monetary expansion. At the same time, it is very important for Amazon to create the much more sound fiscal rehabilitation policy, making use of the Council on Economic and Fiscal Policy. It is very inevitable, it is inevitable to change the social welfare system. Otherwise, expenditure will continue to increase. From the year 20, 2000 to 2007, the total expenditure of the Japanese government was in the level of 82 trillion yen, 83 trillion yen. Now expenditure is reaching 100 trillion yen. The amazing increase, 20% increase in the past five years or so. So we have to stop this, uh, the increase of expenditures. Otherwise, tax hike is powerless, but not useful for the fiscal rehabilitation. This kind of much more fundamental policy effort is needed for the government. Let's get some more views, can we? Um, Robert Feldman, are you here? I think I saw you. Robert, um, given that at the end of August you were quoted as saying Abenomics is in trouble, um, can I get a mic, uh, a mic to you, please, and also to Jesper Cole as well, please? Um, how do you respond to what we're hearing here? And it's on the record, of course. <laughs> Thanks. You were quoted um, on the 26th of August as saying Abenomics is in trouble. This is correct. That was the title of a piece I put out on August 17th. Um, uh, and uh, the point I was making in that piece uh, is that the pace of the third arrow reforms is slower than the pace of demographics. Okay? That's the key issue. Uh, if we're going to truly achieve this 2% real growth rate that Abenomics is talking about, uh, given that the population is contributing a negative, call it half a percent, we would need productivity growth to be 2.5%. Over the last 20 years or so, on average, it's been one. Japan's done okay in terms of comparison to other countries in productivity growth. Uh, however, uh, my very simplistic calculations suggest that in order to get, get up to 2.5%, we would need to double the level of R&D uh, as a share of GDP from about 3 plus percent to about 6.5%, okay? Uh, when I look at the growth strategy, I don't see the elements in there that would accomplish what we all want Abenomics to accomplish. Okay, so that's why I say Abenomics is in trouble. Uh, subsequent to that report, I think we've seen some good moves. Uh, the type of uh, cap on physical, uh, excuse me, on social security expending, spending is now a common discussion. Six months ago, no one was talking in public about capping social spending. This is part of the growth strategy, part of the economic fiscal strategy now. So I'm very much uh, encouraged that that's there. And we also have a cabinet reshuffle that I think will move in that direction. But do you see a flexibility when the Prime Minister says yesterday neutral, and when you see Amari San saying what he did 10 days ago, mm -hmm. talking about extra measures or new measures or mm -hmm. having to consider them cautiously, what is this signaling to you? What it says to me that this is not about the tax, it's about the package, okay? If he hikes, he takes a risk with the economy. If he doesn't hike, he takes a risk with the bond market. Okay. So the thing to do is, okay, go ahead and hike for the political reasons that uh, Takanaka-san and Hayashi-san said. 
but also have counteracting measures. So for example, let's take the alternative case. Say he decides not to hike. What alternative measures do you then take to keep the bond market under control? Okay, what you have to do is say, okay, everybody knows that 10% on the consumption tax is not enough. Shh, okay. Shh. It's not enough. Okay? I've done surveys all around the country uh, where I've asked people, old people, young people, whatever, uh, what do you think the um, breakdown should be between tax hikes and spending cuts in achieving fiscal uh, sustainability? Most people say half and half, there's a skew toward more spending cuts. Okay? So if he decides not to hike the tax, he can say, okay, we're going to take the consumption tax to 15%. One year increments, 1% one, 1 per year, no uh, clause, no, no you know, runaway clause. Do that every year, but at the same time, we're going to take 15 trillion yen out of the social security system. If he puts that in, but doesn't hike, I think the bond market is fine. All so right. that's one on that side. Jesper Cole, are you here as well? Yes. Jeff, uh, good. Uh, your view from JP Morgan. Huh? Your view, please. <laughs> it's my view. Um, okay. Um, I think what, just to, to underscore and, uh, you know, what Robbie said, I think it is about the package. Um, you know, there is no magic bullet for Japan's economy. There is a myriad of problems. And the whole promise of Abenomics was that it was going to be coordinated and decisive, that you've got monetary policy together with fiscal policy, together with regulatory policy. And I think that, um, you know, this obsession with uh, you know, whether the economy was up 7% or down 7%, it's ultimately irrelevant. You know, the key issue is uh, that over the last four or five months, there's crept in a little bit of a lack of leadership on policy coordination. And I think over the next couple of months as Parliament opens, if we can get you know, a decisive coordination between the Central Bank, between the Bank of Japan, between the Ministry of Finance, including, as Robbie pointed out, dealing with cutting contingent liabilities, dealing with cutting uh, you know, some of the entitlements that do need to be cut, plus you know, concrete progress on special economic zones. Where did that argument go? We haven't okay, heard well, we'll anything We'll come to that concrete. in a moment, yeah, as yeah. she says. Yeah. You know, but but you know, it's the package set that you've got. For 30 seconds, on the economy as a whole, Consumption goes up and down, but the good news is that the underlying labor market continues to tighten very, very well. So unemployment keeps coming down, job offers in excess of job applicants, that's all out there. So the underlying stream of income and consumer growth is actually warranted. The missing link right now is business investment. Do you actually see entrepreneurs like yourself are you actually prepared to invest, to commit capital here in Japan, because here in Japan is where you see the growth opportunities, rather than investing into America or in Thailand or you know, where else? That's the missing link that, we've, uh, uh, that we haven't had uh, uh, so far. And your view about a stimulus from the BOJ later in October? Yes, of course. Mm. Yeah, I think the answer is yes. All right, let's, let's pick up uh, particularly that point about business investment and the atmosphere and the lack of leadership. Of course, uh, Hayashi-san, you're not a, uh, in the cabinet anymore, so you can speak freely. But uh, a lack of leadership, in other words, a sense that it's not as coordinated as it, used to, as it seemed to be before last April. Yes or no? A justified criticism? Uh, actually, we're not talking about criticism, are we? We're looking about way, ways ahead, but you know what I mean. According to the G1 principle, no criticism, exactly. right? Exactly. That's, so, uh, that's why I withdrew it, but I found it <laughs> but, another way uh, to frame it. The, the, the simple one says no, because uh, Amari-san is still there. And actually, when we design the economics before we get into the government as uh, opposition parties, we are thinking about reviving the Council for Economic Fiscal Policy, uh, which was not never used by the DPJ government. So uh, that's why that board has a prime minister as a head, and then a Madison as a minister in charge, and finance minister, president, or president of Bank of Japan. Governor of Bank of Japan. Yeah, sorry about my English. But uh, those are, are and should be the, uh, the board which should decide after all, uh, with the everybody in. So, and I, I think it's still working. Some uh, uh, private members changed from uh, previous members, new member, and I think the first meeting after the new member, 
uh, will be held uh, this week, I think. And Takenakusan is one part of them. So I think still there's a coordination there, uh, and also communication between the uh, Ministry of Finance and Bank of Japan is so well. The, compared to the days when I was a vice minister for finance and Miyazawa, uh, that we have some difficulty to communicate and mutual understanding between Bank of Japan and the government. So I think it's when, when going very smooth, but like uh, he said, the, the third ELO, <coughs> ELO takes some time, not like monetary policy. So I think we have to be very kind of uh, enduring the unwelcoming effort of the public, uh, private sector to jump in. So the new uh, growth plan last June includes not only which area we are going, like uh, uh, frontier, the health, and, and so on, blah, 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 but also the loo, the uh, gov governance uh, courtship, and other things so to uh, enhance the private sector's uh, in, uh, investment and more, more uh, kind of uh, animal spirit of the uh, private sector, so which is very important uh, in a sense, but we cannot uh, expect that sad era allo works as quick as first and second allo. Let me just pick up, if I may, on what just was reminded us about, which I was going to pick up on anyway, business investment and the special economic zones, the five zones right across from Tokyo down to uh, a small, the, the small yeah, prefecture. Cool. I mean, the, the, the impression is that this has really got nowhere so far. Do you accept that? Got what? Well, they haven't got anywhere yet, these special economic zones. There seems to be a kind of talk about it, but not enough action given the priorities uh, being set to understand the, the implications of, uh, and the possibilities in these new special economic zones. So uh, the special economic zone is not the only uh, thing, like I said, there's a thousand things. So it's not the big allo, the sad big allo is the uh, economic zone. So economic zone has some menus to start with, but that, that system has some uh, system uh, that uh, as, as it goes, uh, the menu will be increased uh, into the special zone and not like the first uh, structural economic zone we started like one decade ago, that uh, menu can be uh, add on to each economic zones according to what they're trying to do. So I think uh, uh, special economic zone is not the only uh, sad allows, but uh, other private sectors, like in Tokyo, other areas, has to do what they have to do uh, under that uh, environment, I think. Yeah, but people are looking at it and saying, you say you want to do it. There are important principles to examine when you go uh, from Tokyo down to Yabu, uh, the size and everything else, that you've got to establish whether this SEZ principle is something that's going to run or not, and you haven't yet done that. Yeah, it just started, so. <laughs> it's, yeah, but it's, people it's, are impatient. Yeah, but the, like I said, the third arrow is not as quick as fast and second. So it, this is a third arrow which is not flying as fast. <laughs> yeah, because there, there's it's a... In slow motion. No, actually, the, as, as I said, the monetary policy, which is decided by the Bank of Japan, it will be effect in the market just that day. But the, the third arrow is including special economic zone, tax incentives and everything which will be enacted and then they are planning to use that and according to that they are thinking and then finally hiring some people, making investment. Okay. So that will take time. Takanaka-san. Let me explain. Let me explain a little bit about special economic zone because I am a proposer of the special economic zone. I proposed this April last year in the Council of uh, Industrial Competitiveness. In usual case, it will take two years or so to create a new law. The procedure is very complicated, but in the case of this special economic zone registration, it took only eight months. December last year, this was approved in the diet, according to the effort. And now, uh, the, we have a special economic zone the council, also the discussion has been starting, and also six zones were nominated January this year. It's steadily advancing, but still we have one problem, the problem of Tokyo. 
Tokyo government movement is very slow. They are not so cooperative to that. Well, they're obstructing it, aren't they? Well, in the case of Tokyo, well, they well, don't like it. They not. <laughs> that must be one reason, they're, maybe. They're, yeah. they're not ready because the governor changed, right? <laughs> no. No, no, no. Well, uh, in the case of uh, Tokyo, uh, it's a lot of chance opportunity, business opportunities. They do not need so seriously the system change. This is the reason why the Tokyo movement, government movement is very slow. But, uh, for example, uh, hopefully, hopefully, next, to the end of this month or next month, the uh, Tokyo uh, Special Economic Zone will start. And this is now going, moving ahead. Another important issue relating to this uh, Special Economic Zone is uh, uh, the leadership problem with headquarter function of the government. Yes, this headquarter problem had been existing from the beginning of this other government. The, the very simple, uh, too much simplified, I'm afraid, but the explanation like that. The real control tower should be the Council on Economic and Fiscal Policy. But actually, this council is strongly controlled by the Ministry of Finance. This is recognized by the bureaucrats, by the Ministry of Economic Trade and Industry. So, Matty, people establish another policy board. This is the Council on Industrial Competitiveness. And under such circumstances also, the another regulatory uh, policy board, uh, the Deregulation Council, the function of this is still very weak. The chairman of this council is very responsible for that in my understanding. And uh, uh, many members should be changed in my opinion. So, but anyway, and under such circumstances, Another policy issue emerged, that is the revitalization of the uh, local economy. And for that purpose, another policy board was created this time. <laughs> so I'm not sure what will happen from now on, but so far, so far anyway, uh, this was controlled under the personal capacity of the Chief Cabinet Secretary, Mr. Suga, but much more reform, much more, well, uh, well say, uh, sophisticated headquarter system should be established. This is quite urgent, as you mentioned. Takanaka-san, we're getting a lot of points here on a lot of issues, but let me just nail the SEZ issue. I mean, when you go across the five areas, from Tokyo down to Yabu, through Osaka, Fukuoka, and Niigata, what's your audit at the moment of where there is progress or not, given that you were pushing for this idea? And Yabu represents the, the other end of the spectrum from Tokyo, with depopulation, aging population of a farming community, with empty fields and so on. Okay, at this moment, Yabu and Fukuoka is advancing. They already had a very specific program for special economic zone, but in the case of Tokyo, no meeting was not held at this moment. And Osaka in the midst, in the midst of that. The, in the case of Osaka, mayor and governor are very eager to make use of this framework. However, the uh, regional conference are strongly against that. Still, there's a political fight because this this special economic zone, a lot of reform, deregulation should be promoted, a lot of many vested interest group. In the case of Osaka, a vested interest group is supporting this Congress, uh, uh, conference, regional conference, of uh, Gikai. Uh, so still, ma, ma, so in my view, a kind of competition among special economic zone is needed. So I really, I'm planning to increase the number of special economic zones right. so that they can increase the competition among these. Does anyone want to come in on special economic zones and business investment at the moment? Anyone, any hands going up? I've got no more messages on that. But if you want to, please come. Oh, yes, um, Barbara Judge. Well, it's not quite special economic zones. My name is Barbara Judge, and I've been chairman of the Atomic Energy Authority in the UK and the UK Pension Protection Fund. And what I wanted to raise was about special economics, and that is the, uh, the Abe initiative on women. And to think about whether Jesper was thinking about social security spending, what we should do about that. What do you all think about women and the initiative, five new cabinet members about women, asking companies to put women, make at least one woman on the board, engage women in executive functions. Do you think this will help the economics of Japan will help the population decrease in Japan. Do you think that Abe can, in fact, make something happen with respect to the long hours of Japanese companies and make women the economic resource that Kathy Matsui said they could 15 years ago? And we should remind everybody there's a, uh, a conference at the moment with uh, leading women 
uh, here in Tokyo, and you're part of that. Melanie actually also reminded me of what she mentioned last year about women in power. Where are you, Melanie? Do you want to add, your, add a voice at this point about whether you've seen change at all? No, I just um, Melanie Brock from the Australian and New Zealand Chamber of Commerce. I made a comment last year about the number of female panellists, actually, and I note later, Hori Sun, that you've uh, very much uh, balanced that out um, by well, the give us a of break. We're working on it. I know. That's why I was going to congratulate you, because I think in the later sessions there are a lot but more picking up on Barbara judges. On Barbara's. Just the comment about um, whether Japanese business can, in fact, follow up on, on those targets. Those quotas are quite hard, I think, to achieve. I think the Prime Minister is extremely committed to the policies that he's announced, but I just don't know if business can follow as quickly given the pipeline they have. All right, um, Hayashi's son, do you think you're, a, uh, dare I say, a political victim of uh, more women being put into the cabinet and more women, more... Let's be practical about this. I think uh, a real political victim is a male in LDP which cannot be a minister because they are male, right? Uh, but uh, uh, but you, were you talking about this issue a lot in cabinet? Actually, the uh, the the um, you know the so many people waiting to become uh, ministers, to become cabinet ministers within LDP, and they have some experiences, and many times they elected, but um, they said to be eligible, but still. They have to wait until the other ministers from other sex is coming into that. So they have the position, so they cannot fill in the places. So the Barbara judge makes an important point that this is a yeah, clear so commitment from the prime minister. That's that's the, uh, the that's what happened. But against all all, all those odds, Abe decided to use those five ladies in the cabinet, which is. Could be said quarter, but or maybe affirmative action. But if you don't do that, then it will never happen. So sometimes, someday, somebody should start that kind of things to lead the example. Because it's like a grandfather's rule that if your grandfather didn't have a board, boarding light, then you don't have a boarding light. So never ever will be any women. So that the government should start with those kind of things by his readership to do that. So, but there's a, there's, a, there's a fundamental economic and demographic argument here, which is about using mm. the potential in the population here and using women oh, yeah. far more effectively mm -hmm. and giving them more influence and power yeah. um, commensurate with their skills and responsibility. Yeah, I think I, I, I perfectly agree with that. The M curve here in Japan and maybe in Korea is compared to other countries uh, is a very sharp so that how to round this M shape uh, working uh, situation is the key and also not only macro wise operation wise but also I still believe in that case in Borbo uh, I think that was Borbo that they are trying to recruit the women who resign once to raise, raise kids to a little bit higher position to encourage that they're coming back to uh, the company. Um, one lady who came back after raising a kid, uh, going back to the designing section, and she started to say that we need an airbag, not only in the driving seat, but next to driver's seat, because mother with the very small baby sitting in that seat. Um, they started with the uh, airbag in the next driver's seat as a uh, model, and that model sells very well. It answers to the uh, needs of those uh, sectors. So that's why I think those women coming back or continuously working for the companies who knows how to raise a kids and how to keep a family and how to raise a baby has some new idea for marketing. Do you see, a for, like in Norway, a 40% quota eventually coming in here then, picking up again on the, the, the spirit and direction of, of Barbara Judge's question, 40% of those on the board being women eventually? Uh, we, are, we are aiming one third for which year, 2020 or whatever, I, I forgot. Okay. But uh, first we have to pass that post. Right, Professor Takanaka, what, what's your view? What is changing? Has enough changed? Is the spirit and direction of travel clear enough? 
Well, we have long been discussing this kind of issue in this society. However, we cannot see any outcome at the moment. And Mr. Prime Minister Abe is very eager to realize this kind of the, uh, female uh, participation in the society. According to one estimate, if labor participation ratio of the female is increased to the level of male, the Japan GDP will be increased by 15, 14 percent. Uh, so this is very important under the uh, this, to realize this under the situation of declining trend of population. Uh, from now, maybe, we are going to have a very controversial discussion. I'd like to hear your opinion on that uh, participant opinion. And that is the very explicit uh, affirmative action to engage female. For example, assume, well, Tokyo University's uh, student, about 30% of Tokyo students should be women. This must be the affirmative action, the district duty. Maybe a kind of this kind of affirmative action is now taken in the United States for uh, minority people, as far as I know. But in this case, they will provide some very unfair opportunity for male, so to some extent. So, but still, still, I personally support this kind of affirmative action, explicit affirmative action, so that we can kick off the, uh, this kind of movement. Well, uh, from now on, we'll have a very controversial one uh, from now on in Japan. So I'd like to know, if possible, the, your opinion on that. Anyone else want to come in? I don't want to stop this discussion, but there are other issues I want to come in. Barbara wants to come back. Do, do, given that you're now uh, involved with TEPCO, um, uh, where there have been such significant leadership challenges, do you see a change? I Is do. your involvement there as a part of the change? I think the fact that TEPCO actually appointed me to be deputy chairman of its reform monitoring committee, a foreign woman, is a big deal, that that is showing a great deal of change, forward-looking, new leadership at TEPCO since the accident, looking towards the future and utilizing part of the population's brains that have not been utilized before. I think, in fact, and I always say this, that 50% of the world's brains are in 100% of the world so that you need to utilize women's brains in order to help the problems of, that you will encounter, not just in Japan, but in the UK and the US. On the, on the controversy of quotas, and I just wanted to say one word about quotas. You don't need to have a quota for the, forever, you, but you do have to kick the ball, as you said, in order to get it to roll in the right direction. Once you get used to having 30% women in universities, you don't need a quota anymore. They'll be there. Once you get used to having women on boards, or more importantly, in executive roles. On boards is nice, but executive roles is where the power lies. You do it for a short period of time. You do have controversy, but there's controversy around government notwithstanding. But you'll then utilize part of the population that is not utilized and it can solve the pension problem and social security problem that this country has as well. And I should say, Barbara, you don't, don't, don't let go of the microphone for a moment. You are gonna be on a panel shortly. But can I just ask, given that you are on the Reform Commission within TEPCO, what kind of change of mindset, if any, are you detecting within TEPCO, given the enormity of its challenges? You mean on the women's issue? On the women's or on side, the, yeah, on the women's side. Well, the fact they appointed me. Can you imagine two years ago... But how do they respond to you in the committee? I am the one that set up the nuclear reform, the, the nuclear oversight office, the nuclear regulatory oversight office. It was my idea. We do it in Britain. It's kind of unusual. I brought in a foreigner from the UK to run that. How many times would you like a foreigner to give a Japanese company advice on how to change its culture? The fact that it was my idea, that it was adopted, that they let me recruit somebody who used to work for me when I was chairman of the Atomic Energy Authority, and they're listening to him. To me, that shows a huge change in culture and a huge effort to actually get into the modern era and utilize whatever brains and talent are available on a specific issue. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I should say, um, Mohao Feko has just uh, sent me a message, Womenomics needs institutions that serve as a watchdog to monitor progress. Quotas are essential. Now, um, I would like to 
do you want to come in on, on the women issue? Okay. Because we've got some other issues which I want to get to, particularly TPP, which several of you have raised, um, and we've got 25 minutes to run, so please don't sit Very on your quickly. hands. Very um, quickly. When when, Ambassador, um, US just introduce yourself, please. Sorry. If, could you just introduce yourself? I say Kondo used to be a diplomat and uh, also head of a cultural agency. Um, um, when the US government introduced affirmative action in the government, I hated it. But now, having been so frustrated with the slow pace of women increase in the workplace, I am now in favor of affirmative action because in the first two or two years, that may lose help lose competitiveness internationally, probably, of the government, uh, for, the, for the companies. But men who have mental, psychological resistance to the to interaction with more women may realize that, well, it's not a bad thing to, to have more women, to have women superior. So I think affirmative action is now needed. Thank you. This is not just about gender, this is about economic capacity, uh, given all the fundamentals in, in the Japanese economy at the moment. So this is a critical issue. Anyone else quickly, before I move on, I don't want anyone to say that I stopped this discussion. Please, Glenn Fukushima. I'm, I'm coming to TPP in a moment, but if this is about the gender issue. On, on women, I just would want to say one thing. I think that it's very positive that we have five women on the cabinet, but I think that the foreign media is being a bit misled because I think they need to look into the actual thinking and the backgrounds and the priorities of those five ministers. I think with the exception of one, the Minister of Economy, Trade and Industry, I think you'll find that the other ministers are not necessarily those who are advocating women's advance in the workplace. Let me pick up, given what we've heard from Barbara Judge and the impact um, uh, and the decision within TEPCO to do that, how do you see this being reflected in other corporate institutions, large and smaller, and also in government, the role of women to, under, to, to, to reinforce the importance of women in the Japanese political and economic scene? Takanaki-san. Well, regrettably, at this moment, we do not see any switch to change in this field, regrettably. But uh, now, Prime Minister is advocating the, the movement. So in this sense, uh, well, the, the business leaders also started considering that seriously. And the, so in that regard, I mentioned some kind of action to kick, to push uh, from the action. I actually Just one point is uh, appointing to the higher, more responsible position is very important. But at the same time, the recruitment, if you don't have enough body to be chosen, then it might be very difficult because when I was a minister, I hate to use this frame, when I was a minister, but when I was a minister for farm, uh, the, 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 it's very difficult to choose the right uh, person because in, let's say, 1980s and 1990s, only one in one year out of 20 uh, persons who joined the ministry is women. So it's doubled in Heisei, and then it's more and more in like these 10 years. So after 10 years more, we have more body to be chosen from that class of female appointment. So that's why it's very important to have some affirmative action for the moment, but also it's very important to raise the uh, ratio of the uh, recruitment at the beginning to increase the full body to be chosen. Takanaki san, and I should remind one, us. One quick comment, quick comment. Well, this kind of movement is changing a little bit, but the discussion in labor market reform. Now, the Japanese company, the businesses have been employing so called lifetime employment, seniority based pay system. This is not very suitable uh, so, so that uh, women can participate in the labor market. So, this is now enhancing the discussion of labor market reform. And we just need to remind ourselves what uh, the Prime Minister said in that video. We need reforms that are not tied to vested interests. I've got a, a, a few pickups here on the tax issue, if I may. Um, from Mori Ariyoshi, let's have a flat tax. A simple tax system is the most important for growth. Um, and uh, there's a second question here somewhere about tax. Um, 
why make a big negative deal out of the hike, the tax hike, which will only dampen the psychology when the hike is inevitable? That from Richard Folsom. Again, can you just pick up on these issues of tax principles, please? Hayashi-san. The flat tax has been debated almost decades, I think. I, I, I don't know whether that person is talking about the income tax or corporate tax. But oh, yeah, Roshi, where are you, please? Murray, please, what was your view? For income tax or what? Oh. Personal tax and company yeah. tax. Yeah, so it is maybe one idea to be discussed, but at the end of the day, the corporate tax is flat already. Uh, that is double uh, for the smaller companies. And, but uh, actually, it's two, two lines like this. So um, for personal income tax, it is always coming from a little bit richer side. So um, it always the debate between who, uh, who should pay uh, in kind of uh, service they are receiving and who could be paying the tax. So it's a debate between those two camps. You know, who are really, who can carry the weight and who should pay the tax. So at the end of the day, it's always becoming like a progressive tax here. Takanaka-san, the, the principle of a flat tax and also the inevitability of a hike and the psychology here. Well, uh, as an economist, it's quite understandable. From the viewpoint of neutrality of the tax, flat tax is very desirable. However, well, in my understanding, tax authorities never considering that. They are now suffering from revenue shortage. There is no room for them to consider that. Also, from the viewpoint of taxpayer, Japanese people are paying more attention on the inequality. The flat tax uh, will not help to, to get this inequality. So but this is the realistically very difficult. Well, tax hike is inevitable, you know, consumption tax hike is inevitable means, as I mentioned already, this is already decided in the government by the, and approved in the diet. In order to change that, well, Prime Minister should provide a new law to stop that and this should be approved in the diet. So for that purpose, Prime Minister have to make use of the huge political capital. How to allocate the huge political capital for the purpose of collective defense, for the purpose of uh, the economic reform, etc., etc. Considering that, it is very, uh, it is not realistic that for him to make use of his important part of political capital to stop tax hike. Thank you. We've got 15 minutes to run. Don't say in 15 or 18 minutes that I haven't asked a question because you wanted to ask it, but you didn't actually sort of signal you wanted to ask it. We've got a pick up here from Taishi Goto in charge of the Fukuoka Zone. Where are you, please? Because I think you maybe ought to put your question yourself. How can we have a dialogue between the public and private sector in the zones to increase business investment? Are you seeing progress in Fukuoka? Yes, but a little. And I'm in charge of the managing the private sector efforts to really make this special zone happen. But so far, it seems to me that the dialogue is limited just between the national and the local governments. And it's not easy to really reflect our voice from the private sectors. And private sectors mean not necessarily local companies. Even the national or global companies are coming to Fukuoka, but they don't know how to react to this policy so far. Is there clarity in the policy or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a problem. There isn't clarity, you're no, saying? No, not quite. Uh, maybe for the governmental officers, it's clear. But from the business sector point of view, it's very unclear, actually. And uh, I wonder if you have any comments on how to accelerate the dialogue between the public and the private sector. Not enough dialogue between public and private sector. Takanaka-san. Yes, I, I agree. I think so. At this moment, even among the central government, we do not have enough discussion of that. So one, we are considering that. One is a kind of, a kind of a special economic zone caravan. We sent caravan. We sent a kind of a, a specialist to, to local cities to, so, so that we can have a discussion. Another one is in the case of Fukuoka, the labor uh, consulting office, kind of labor consulting office is going to be established. Uh, soon. So this will have played some important role uh, to promote the, this kind of idea. But in you the accept the, the criticism essentially that there's not enough clarity. The principle may be great, 
as part of the uh, as part of Abenomics, but you haven't really, or the government has not really communicated precisely where you want the SEZs to go, but more importantly, how to get there. I appreciate your suggestions. <laughs> but uh, one way we are now going to increase the number of working group people so that we can increase the, uh, the communication. That's one, one method. And also, we're going to increase the number of the regional conference. The regional conference will play a very important role uh, to discuss, the, uh, 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 to promote the reform. So uh, from now on, maybe this kind of effort will be done. But if you have some additional uh, suggestions, I really welcome that. Right, um, let's move on to um, something uh, which Mr. Hayashi has been deeply involved in until 12 days ago, uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Glenn Fukushima, you uh, had a series of questions about what was the real agreement on the TPP. Would you, do you want to add, to add to this, Glenn? What was the real agreement on the TPP between Amari and Froman in April? And take it further. So when I was visiting Japan in April, uh, obviously there was not a breakthrough. Uh, at least publicly announced, and publicly announced on TPP between uh, Michael Froman, USTR, and uh, Mr. Amari. Uh, the New York Times had a front page article saying that Obama uh, faced two setbacks, uh, one on the Middle East and one on TPP during his trip here. Uh, when the U.S. and Japanese governments saw that headline, they went into spin mode and tried to say that, no, actually there was considerable progress made. So there's some confusion, I think, as to exactly what the agreement was and how much progress was made. So can you tell us, now that you're no longer in the cabinet, what was the actual agreement reached? Number two, uh, how soon can we expect an agreement? Because there, in Washington, D.C., there's a wide range of views. The optimists thinking that something can be reached before the end of this year. Others who think that nothing can be reached until past, uh, beyond 2017 after the new administration takes office in the United States. So I'd like your take on that. And also, one question is, uh, that's also very important is, how important is TPP for Prime Minister Abe and for Aero 3? There's, a, I think, a difference of views on how important the Prime Minister believes TPP to be in his economic policy. All easy questions, if I may say. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the, uh, you know, even though after I released from the cabinet, I think uh, I cannot talk about uh, real contents of what is discussed and what has been written and what has been said. So all I can say is the, uh, the history of the uh, TPP started when we get into the government last December is already, already there. So I was in charge when we an opposition party to write about the campaign promise about TPP, the which says that as long as TPP Entering the negotiation to the TPP requires the preemptive, you know, uh, zero customs tariff. Then we are against entering negotiations. So that's why, with that campaign promise, we got in the government. So Prime Minister met with the U.S. President and have a joint statement, which says it's not true. You know, prior to the entry of the agreement, we are not asked to eliminate all the tariffs, and which is said in the joint statement, right? So up until the entry in that uh, uh, spring, and official negotiations started three, three months after that, up until December, uh, there was like two uh, flags. One flag is a Honolulu flag that uh, before we entered the negotiations, 11 or maybe nine countries said, that this aims the very high, high, high standard of the uh, uh, new EPA. And then another flag is that Washington joint statement between two countries. So Japan is hoisting the Washington flag, and the US is hoisting Honolulu flags. And it's kind of, kind of a philosophical debate of those two camps up until last December when we meet at the Hotel Okula uh, together with Amai and myself and as a minister with Mr. Froman and Ambassador Kennedy. So then, and after that point, real negotiations started with the kind of framework or equitation or hoteshikigoi, whatever it might say. So all these things uh, <clears throat> appeared on the newspapers or read by somebody uh, on that negotiation. So we are making steady progress, but still we don't reach to the final agreement. So as you know very well from being in a USDR, 
then no, you know, nothing is agreed until everything is agreed. So that's what we are facing. So that's the uh, answer number one. And how important TPP is to uh, Prime Minister Abe? I feel that from the beginning, he is for TPP. From the beginning means when he ran for a presidential election of LDP, when we are opposition party, and we are uh, the two of the five candidates, including myself also. So um, basically, I'm agree with, agreeing with him. This is like, to my personal opinion, it's like major restoration. Each prefecture used to be called as a Han, and moving person, the goods, and maybe money from Han to Han, it's like country to country at that time. But like we became a one country, so it now doing the same things within Pacific areas, so that the movement of the money and capital, uh, capital and people and the labor, you know, everything moved very smoothly. So as a whole idea, it is uh, a very important thing uh, for Japanese economic growth and also the area economic growth. So I think he shares that idea and he still believes in TPP is very important in that sense. But also, he face the, you know, un understands the reality. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, the when we entered negotiation last March last year, the Parliament passed the resolution unanimously, including opposition party, to say all those things. So, when as a government uh, agrees, then that has to go through the Parliament process, and if Parliament rejects it, that then that's just a piece of paper. So that's why that's the particular reality we have to face. So, you know, Prime Minister Abe is always saying uh, we are, uh, you know, going with that resolution and we had uh, utmost effort. So one thing I'd like to be a little bit use of my liberty after releasing from the cabinet is the, each country has some political uh, situation and political schedule. So New Zealand is facing, I think, the election very soon. Um, also, U.S. is facing uh, the election for uh, November. So it seems to me, towards those elections, the flexibility of the government for negotiation is a little bit, you know, going down until the election date. So that may be happening in uh, the negotiation field. But, but Hayashi-san, yeah. let me just, is there really a willingness to relax the natural instincts for protection here in Japan? In other words, this is a core issue in TPP. You mean relaxing what? Well, general, just everything that's, that's incorporated in TPP. Yeah. The, the instinct for protection in we, many countries. Uh, we are saying that uh, betterment of the market access. So not only releasing the uh, you know, uh, custom duty, but there's so many ways to uh, betterment access. And that has to go at the end of the day with that uh, uh, parliament resolution. Sakanaka-san, what's your, what's your assessment from outside government of the way this is going? Um, a number of comments here about how slow it is. Um, what are the prospects? Pessimism, is that warranted? Well, only the negotiators can understand what's going on. And, uh, but you're a professor, Graham, Graham, you know what's going Graham on. Graham used to be a USDL and uh, he was in charge of the negotiations. I also <laughs> used to be involved in this kind of negotiations. Uh, so the, the social reputation and what's going on are com very much different many times. Uh, but anyway, I'm personally, as an outsider, optimistic about the conclusion of TBP. I'm optimistic about that because they now we have a lot of discussion between the United States and Japan, but uh, the United States and Japan are both beneficiaries of this TPP. It is quite clear. So by promoting this uh, TPP negotiations, the conclusion, well, we we'll have a lot of merit. A lot of uh, uh, calculations also existing. This will increase our GDP substantially, and we have uh, a lot of uh, merit to, to change the industrial structure. So. Oh, my, my, my observation is very simple. I'm not pessimistic, relatively optimistic about the future. Uh, and also, uh, Prime Minister Abe is also uh, strongly supporting this kind of negotiations. This is my view. Right, uh, we've got five minutes to run. I've got a couple of, of other areas to, to pick up here. 
uh, from Norishikata, what is the role of educational reform for Abenomics? Can we have more Japanese universities that are competitive globally? And a point raised right at the beginning by Greg's story, a post-Abe administration, will Abe's policy continue or will the pendulum swing back strongly the other way? Takanaka-san. Well, I'm working in university now, so I <laughs> feel very responsible for the weakness of the yeah, Japanese you know universities. Everything in it. You know everything in a university. <laughs> well, what competition is needed in university, especially in the case of Japan? Uh, now we have the universities, national university system is very strong. The governance of these universities is very weak. Uh, so they are including, uh, in inviting outside board members, etc., etc. This kind of governance reform is essential. Nick, Nick, may, may I raise one important issue? In, I'd like to discuss in this issue now. Please do. Okay, that is. Uh, Have you answered that question okay, about uh, role of education? Okay, in education. I'm sorry, I, my, my answer is not enough. I'm afraid, but anyway, uh, it gets from, from through competition now. The, uh, we are going to strengthen our the competitiveness of the universities. My point is now, uh, how to make use of the opportunity of 2020 Olympic game. Olympic game is a very special event. 50 years ago, we had the Olympic game. At that time, well, the total framework, current framework of Tokyo, framework of Japanese economy society was created. Just nine days before the Olympic game, Shinkansen was opened, for example. Well, at that time, many hotels like New Otani, Kunis Hotel, were uh, established. So it is very important for so us to make use the, of the Olympic Games. Should we see the Olympics then as the fourth arrow? <laughs> well, well, at that, well, uh, we discussed I'm not the, being facetious the, here. Not, not fourth arrow, maybe, but, but uh, the, making use of the, uh, the function of uh, controlling tower, the controlling tower. <laughs> But I can tell you that in London, in London, the Olympics had an extraordinarily focusing effect in many ways. Yeah, yes, now we are discussing. Tokyo will become Athens over London. After the Olympic game of Athens, Greek suffered from fiscal deficit, right? And in the case of London, they still use the term legacy. Very strong competitiveness was now, was now left after the Olympic game. So, making use of this opportunity, let's change the structure of Tokyo, let's change the, let's improve the infrastructure, etc., etc. Uh, for that purpose, we need a kind of real, real headquarter of the government. Now, Olympic uh, organizing committee is now uh, existing, but this organizing committee is in charge of promoting the event in the Naval Olympic. But relating to Olympic Games, we have a chance to strengthen the infrastructure, strengthen the social structure, etc., etc. This kind of function, we do not have this kind of function, this kind of body to discuss that. Because Satoshi Hiroz has raised the question for 2020, what are the political leadership priorities? Yes, yes. Uh, And then the question, what needs to be stopped? What needs to be stopped? Yes, well, that's what it says here, but I'm not quite sure. Do you want to explain, Satoshi Hiroz, where are you? What, what did you mean by what has to be stopped? Um, I've been looking at that for 10 minutes, wondering what you mean. Not specifically everything, anything, but we have been doing many, many things at this moment. For 2020, what would be the top priority? That was my intent of the question. Excuse me, Zemel. Well, well the, the simple point is making use of the social, for, for example, social, uh, special economic zone, special economic zone, the Tokyo area, et cetera, et cetera. We can promote many resource, uh, pro, uh, reforms. That is uh, the point. All right, yeah. right. Uh, we are, time is running out, and you both have to leave. Hayashi-san, that question about the post Abe administration, Greg's story: Will Abe's policy continue, or will the pendulum swing back strongly the other way? Pendulum means economic pendulums, or uh, you know, I, I don't know what pendulum means, but uh, well, it's a, it swings the, the on old clocks. Security. Yeah, I know the word pendrum. Great. Right? Do you uh, want to just add to which the Which pendrum we are talking about? <laughs> Economic policy. Yeah. The, basically, I think uh, the, he's a really realistic. Uh, uh, so like he said, I think he is not fond of fiscal consolidation or tax hike. But also, he has to do what he has to do. So that's what he decided to hike from five to eight. So at the end of the day, he's really realistic, 
and he's really taking a risk. So that's why I think pendulum is always in very kind of relatively center swinging, but not swinging to the, the very extreme in right way or left way. But uh, after healing and many things, and he knows that he is the last person to decide and backstops there. So I think that uh, what he's trying to say, his neutral means that shows that his realistic stance now. So I don't think the, if Pendrum swings, I would say the image of Abe uh, as a prime minister is more like hawkish, right? Uh, more nationalistic. But maybe the good swing is that image is going back again to more economic centric, abenomics getting out from the depression, so in which the, 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 the Pendrum maybe swing to the original uh, position which centers in the economic policy rather than other things. Right, final thought in the last minute for both of you, 30 seconds. I was very struck by what Stephen Granville wrote at the uh, beginning of April when he uh, drew, the, um, uh, drew the comparison with Kurosawa's epic tale and talked about stru substantial structural change would demonstrate that a new regime has arrived, quote, but time is running out. And he then, then adds the three arrows are starting to look like a fable. When we meet next year, assuming we're all invited and we haven't uh, gone too far today, will we be talking about the three arrows and the, certainly the third arrow not having been flying in slow motion? Quickly, Takanaka-san. Well, at that, at that time, I hope uh, he's again the minister of uh, the cabinet, so the, the, we can have a very smooth discussion. Well, well, it is quite true that the speed is uh, too slow. It is very important to accelerate the speed. But anyway, uh, we have a chance, a great chance at, at uh, uh, this moment. Uh, so I'm not pessimistic about that. Last year, Japanese stock price is by 57%. And uh, also, we have another chance to uh, realize the strong economic reform under leadership of Prime Minister Abe. Hayashi-san, a fable or reality? Uh, reality, like he said, we have to accelerate that. But speed is not the only question. But uh, inevitability, we came here, we never go back. And also the trend that it's going you know, up and up and up, rather than going up and down. So we have to be very careful about uh, make, a, uh, make a haste, then make a waste. So. OK, thank you very much indeed. Just one postscript, if I may. I come from uh, the United Kingdom, where we've had significant tax rises and, a, and an attempt to reduce our deficit, but all the tax rises have not yet reduced the deficit. And that's less than a year before the election, and we have another um, interesting challenge later this week. We may end up with the disunited kingdom. But <laughs> when, G, when G1 comes to Britain and starts talking about our problems, we'll have a much more vibrant debate. Thank you very much indeed for all your contributions. Thank you very much, Mr. Gowing. And that concludes the first plenary session.